Hi there folks, good afternoon to you. It's the 1st of March and I just wanted to bring you in on what I'm doing here. You recall the last video clip we did together, I was I remember throwing these GP bowls which Remember, I told you they were going to be um, made into serving dishes. So, that's where we're going to pick up from now. Um, you know, when you have a bowl like this and you then squash it, what happens is the base often doesn't remain quite flat consequently it can have a little rock to it so we're going to have to address that immediate them all so i'm going to take this and i'm going to just try to if there is any slight tendency for the for it to have a place where it rocks in the middle because when you do this you see it very slightly lifts the side so that's just just something to be aware of um, it's got a very slight rock there so I'm giving them a smart tap, as you can see. The other, the other thing that we're going to have to do is thumb them off. To do that, I should have a sponge handy. There it is. So again, these are not really trimmed. We're just going to thumb the bases off, bearing in mind that we did wet trim them. Remember I showed you with my throwing stick. This guy, and remember I showed you about going in right in underneath there with your throwing stick to really clean off. And that's, that's, that's really important to learn that technique of how to wet trim. I don't know what the right terminology is, but I call it wet trimming. It makes sense to me. So we're thumbing these around. And then that's all that they should require. Getting, getting rid of any flat spots. Now this is a paddle that you can see it's got like a, a pattern on one side um, but on the other side it's completely flat. So there is a place in your studio for a flat for a flat paddle for doing little jobs such as this. And you maybe you just want to paddle the side of a pot and you don't want to leave any kind of impression. So you know, it's useful to have. That one's going to have to be trimmed a little bit because I didn't really get down there on that last one with my throwing stick, as I should have done. left a slight little ridge around. Let's just check that we're in the picture. All good. 
Yeah, we seem to be, don't we? So maybe we'll me zoom it a touch, just a touch. Um, I'm trying to show you what's involved in doing these, not just showing you, let's say, the juicy bits, but just all the little bit, all the little sort of side issues that might crop up when you make them. There are lots of little side issues, aren't there, along the way? That what do I mean by side issues? I mean little things that need to be done, but that you may not show, say, on the camera because. It may not look so good, but let's just talk about these these guys. Once you've lifted them from the wheel and put them down, you saw me. I squished them, didn't I? But then I have to come back to them a bit later on, and and follow up with that because you know you do it so much and it flops back, doesn't it? Because it's wet, so you have to wait for them to stiffen up a bit. Okay, and then come back to them again, and then give them a following, you know, squish. And then you might need to come back again, even later again, when they're even a little bit harder. And you might even, although I haven't had to do that in this case. This one, I seem to remember, I, I knocked him out of shape a bit on the rim I was doing something, I don't know what I was doing, I was taking my apron off or something and one of the, some part of my apron knocked against the side of the dish and has left a, left a, a mark there. Such is life. These things happen. The clay is such a forgiving material, isn't it, to work with that we are not downcast. <laughs> All right, so there you've seen me now. What's involved in in um, now? There was one here. I said it should perhaps be trimmed, but maybe we'll get away with not needing to. Thumbing these around, you see, with a, a damp thumb. You have a sponge handy so you can just get a bit of dampness onto the end of your finger there, and that allows your thumb then to do that smoothing action. Okay, well, then what's, what's now left to do with these is I'll take some clay and just roll out some lugs. Got some clay here already prepared. Actually, this is quite nice clay because this is clay that has been reconstituted, so it's nice and um, it's nice and plastic. You know. So we're going to take a little piece of that. All right, we've damped the work work surface. Maybe damp your hand. Not a bad idea. All right, and we're going to roll. using the whole of my hand and you can turn it backwards and forwards like that dee 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 oh, it's a dull old day today Another sunshine. I'm going to need my my knife. See, with a small piece of clay, once you start, once you start to roll it out, it, you can it, it it gets longer and longer and longer, doesn't it? The saucisson. Le petit saucisson. Greetings to all French potters. 
as we as we're speaking a little bit of French. We must greet the French potters. Les potiers, les potiers de la France. Okay. No, then I've got to go search for my fettling knife. Where is that? Here it is. So we're just going to take off the the very end, the very ends that we've that we've rolled. Let's take one of these and put him up there on the banding wheel. Because what I want, what I want to do is actually just cut these now into. So you cut one, cut one, you see. And then take the original one that you cut and use that as a measure. Comme ça. Un, deux, trois. Okay. okay. So we've got a few lugs there to be to be getting on with. Let's bring the camera right in here so you can see what this man is doing. Okay, let's bring the camera in. Yeah. Yeah, you can see that? Good. Yeah. All right. That'll do. We're going to have a little bit of water here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a couple of little um, loop handles on each end of of this. So we're going to take one of these, all right, and we're just going to bend it. You can pre bend them, you see, a little bit like this, because these are going to go on each end. Now you may see that the color of this clay is perhaps slightly darker, it's exactly the same clay. It's just that it's been rotted down a bit, so it has some of that dark, you know, it gets dark, doesn't it, in, as it rots. So we're going, to, we're going to put the handle here on the end. So I'm just going to wet my thumbs here. Um, I'm going to make a little keyed area there using my, using my fingernails of each thumb, you see, that are wet like that. All right, we're then going to take the little loop and put the loop there. You can do this, it's convenient to do this on a banding wheel so you can spin it round and you can refer one end to the other to make sure that you're getting it straight. And I'm now going to just apply a little pressure here, you see, and we're going to just smooth that in. As I say, don't worry that the clay looks a little darker, so it looks like it's two different clays. It, it isn't. It's just, you can see it looks messy, doesn't it, because it's a different color clay. But that in the firing um, will disappear because it is in fact the same clay. So we just, now you want to have your sponge handy. Okay, we, we put that one on, let's do the one on the other end and then I'll finish them off and show you how I do that. So this is where it's helpful to have the banding wheel so you can spin it and we're going to get it right, right opposite. So this one's going to go like that. Now if you use wet thumbs, you see, the wetness off the end of your thumb combined with your fingernail scratching it will create the slip there where you need it. Like that, you see. Okay. And take your your next what's going to be your next loop handle. Just rotate it like this just to round off the ends. Okay. Okay, and then just bend it as it were over your 
over your finger like this to get it into a loop, sort of loopy shape. Okay, you're going to put that there like that, and then you're going to spin him around. You're going to eyeball him, make sure that he's really opposite, and then do the same as what you did on the last one a little bit of pressure to form the the soft clay of the loop into the into the body of the okay we're just going to pull that clay down you see my thumb is pulling that soft clay down all right them up there okay so using my thumb pull them down like that now we're just going to just tweak it a little bit okay what we've got to do now is finish off the ends Let's just get the camera in there because that's interesting to see how I do that and we, we can you can do it in your own way. I just want you to see how I do it. Maybe you come in like that. I'm just trying to change the focus a bit there. like that you see and I use this now you need a little bit of a wet finger to do this and I pull that down like that and then across and then down Trying to get the just trying to get the feel of that right. Yeah. A little bit touchy feely those, just to get them as you want them. Um So that's the little serving, little serving bowl. Let's do one more. So, we'll wet our thumbs. Use your fingernail to create the slip. Take the little handle, loop him, bend him over your finger like that. And place Just place in there a little bit of downward pressure. Same at this end. Dead opposite. Dead 
take your loop handle, roll him like this, and as you roll him, you your fingers rip around the end. Bend him over your finger like that. So you've got a nice little loop. Put the loop handle in position. Apply some squeezing down with pressure to Okay, now we're going to just join this, pulling the soft clay down with a slight, a slightly damp finger. Just got to get that right. That sort of the amount of wetness that you need to be able to do this kind of work. It, it is you have to learn it a little bit. You know, it's very. It's very touchy feely, but you get to you get to you do get to know it. If it's too wet, you see your thumb is just going to slip over the surface, and it's not going to pull the clay down. You want to you want to pull the clay down, but you don't want to do it with a dry finger either. It's just one of those things you just have to. to learn by doing. The clay will teach you. Don't be afraid, just you'll get to know what what is required as you do it. Okay. Now we're going to just finish off these ends like I did. I don't know if you can see what I'm trying to achieve, but you see how that, how the line of the bowl, how it curves up over here and then down, and then it just, just comes up here, you see, into the, into the handle. So for me, it, it, it's what, what for me adds a little bit of beauty or style or however you want to describe it to the to the to this serving dish that we're making I'm calling I'm coining a new phrase it's called FB and it's not Facebook <laughs> It's function with beauty. One of the last things that my grand, or in fact, the last thing that my granddad said to me. My granddad was Bernard Leach, well-known potter. One of the last things he said to me, he said, Simon, try to make pots where you combine function with, beauty, with, with aesthetic beauty. Try to combine the two. So that's something I've sort of try to take on board and try to look for something in your work that is beautiful but also functional and try and heart combine these two together Ooh, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking this handle is or well, that handle is just a little wee bit to the left it's hardly noticeable but all right so I'm just trying to you see this edge how it and then it dips down and then it just rises up there, you see, as it joins the handle. And if it's just that you don't really want to sponge these over once you've done them, but if there's any kind of tidying up a little bit, just a, a quick sponge is will be okay. So this is a little a little serving dish. It's just a different, um, a different style maybe than conventional one. It's I like these to look kind of fresh looking here, where the 
where there's push it in and pull away like that fast a little bit you see get a feeling of crispness so there we are just wanted to show you these little um, I call them serving dishes well I can ma imagine it's an open serving dish okay so there's no lid on it or anything on these particular kind you know you have lidded you had lit you have lidded serving bowls and dishes and you have what and some that that don't have lids yeah so this is one of those anyway uh, I encourage you have a go at doing this take your humble GP bowl and um, squash it out of shape and um, put a couple of lugs maybe there's some other things that you can think of what we could do with a with the GP bowl it's very versatile and you can make them in big and small and you can squash them you can ah, loads of things that you can do okay folks until next time, as they say, or as I say, FB and KP. Keep practicing. Thanks for joining me. See you soon. Bye-bye.